What are you doing, Mumps? A little soggy, hey, girl? Poor things. Finally stopped raining this morning for a little bit. I was going to buy some water wings for the horses if this kept up. Maybe build a new ark. Man, that was one go of rain. But anyway, let's see who we can offend today. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, kind of funny. You know, when you say whatever topic is, like the other day about the flat earth thing, so many people will email me and preach to me. If you don't accept the fact that the earth's flat, blah, blah, like I said earlier. But, and obviously it's going to be a bunch of blowback from the emotionally challenged people, but you know what? It doesn't matter what the topic is. Like this topic that we seem to be focused on mostly on this channel, always say to everyone, take from it what you will or leave it. It's too easy. And that goes the same with the people who preach flat earth or preach that a man who fathered children is actually a woman. Whatever. I don't give a shit. I've taken from it what, like, what I will or I'll leave it. Big deal. Got an email from, I got a flood of emails from uh, emotionally bent flat earth people who just can't accept the fact that I actually have a choice to either take from it what I will or leave it when it comes to that topic too. Alright you guys, that's what I'm getting at. Is people that preach. And if you do not jump on their team, then they're going to tell you that you're going nowhere unless you accept this fact. Whereas on this channel, it doesn't matter what the topic is, you take from it what you will or you leave it. You come here with a wide open door or you leave. It's up to you. If you're not picking up what I'm putting down or if you're not picking up the knowledge that thousands of people are sharing here, that's fine. Who cares? But if you come here to attack people, unless they jump on your bandwagon, well, that's not too cool. Right? Not too cool. So, there's a pile of people out there who have studied enough and accept the fact or believe the fact or whatever it is, the earth that we're on is flat. That's awesome. Why do I choose to leave it? It's because I don't know anybody who's who's lost their passion for life because the earth is flat or not. I don't know anyone who's suffering from PTSD right now and can't take their children anywhere where there's the forest because the earth's flat. That's why. That's the big difference. I don't know anybody who's absolutely emotionally annihilated and can't go anywhere where there's a bush because the earth's flat. But I do know of tens of thousands of people who are passionate about the same things I am who have had the outdoors absolutely annihilated for them and they're so overprotective of their children now, they're, actually, they're probably being the most annoying parents on the planet because of what they saw running around in the forest. The same thing that I saw. So, what can I do for those people? Exactly what I'm doing here today. That's the difference between me and agro-aggressive flat earthers. All right, end of story, end of topic. I'll never bring it up here ever again, okay? Now, moving along. Somebody needs to be heard. And they will be heard right now. And it's starting to rain again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, here we go. Wild story from Saskatchewan with photos. Dear Steve, been you been with you from the beginning. I think I was one of the very first subscribers. And what an awesome journey it's been. I'd wrote a novel to you quite a while back about my first experience in 2003. It, like many others, changed my life as an outdoorsman. I'll make this one a bit quicker. Being that this is my third experience, I was not as nearly as frightened, and I can attribute that to you and everyone here that shares at the round table. Let me read that a little smoother. Being this is my third experience, I was not nearly as frightened, and I can attribute that to you and your to you and everyone here that shares at the round table. God bless you, and God bless all you here for sharing. I put all my pieces together and feel more at peace now knowing I can be a part of this group of intellectuals. This last experience happened in Northeast Saskatchewan on the morning of June 22nd, 2021, this last summer. I was operating a grader in a municipality that borders the Northern Provincial Forest and this area of the province is as beautiful as it is wild. There are many drainages, creeks and small rivers that all get their momentum and run towards the bordering low level land of Manitoba. I was down on the river bottom attempting to widen the easement up to the bridge and make the grid road a little better up to the crossing. 
And as I was going back and forth and turning around and screwing around for what was a couple hours, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. As I backed the grader onto the approach, I thought I saw something black as night sitting above this beaten game trail. I looked again and it was gone. No harm, no foul. I played it off as a bear or something, as this was right beside the river. I began to cross the bridge and ascend the valley I was in back into the flats of the farmland, about a half a mile from the bridge. As I was cresting the hill, I thought I saw something hop or jump over this grid road. This was one of the major grids in the area, and I thought to myself, it would have been Olympic jump for a moose or elk at a full run. But regardless, I got my phone out to hopefully get a picture of whatever animal it was. For those of you that don't know, when you're sitting in a grader, your head sits around eight to nine feet up, so you have an amazing view of everything always carrying on. I slowed the grader down to a complete stop and thought to myself, well, what the F, where did this thing go? All the while having my phone unlocked and my camera ready. It was within three seconds of looking, my stomach dropped out of my ass. I was looking into the eyes of something trying to hide behind, behind two poplar trees. We locked eyes for what seemed like five minutes, probably more one to two, and we just stared at each other. It slowly turned sideways and like that disappeared. I was able to get a couple of photos on my phone that I'd like to sh you to share with everyone, please. I'm like you, I think a photo is just a photo, and I'm not saying that it's to be all end all, but let everyone make their own judgment as we're all, we're all here to share and be kind to each other. My guts and my theory told me later after a long ponder that the thing I seen near the bridge was probably a young curious juvenile watching me from the bank. This reason I say this is because it would have otherwise would have had to cross this deep fast river, all the thick foliage and run a half a mile up the hill through thick brush, flank me, hop the road, all within about 30 seconds. The one I looked at was very tall and the one near the river was not. So there it is, do what you want people. Thanks so much for everything you do Steve, I'll never have the words to express how this platform became the therapy I needed to grow from that first encounter. I just want to say to you Steve, God bless you and huge shout out and a God bless to everyone else out there watching and listening. We all need to be kind to one another, stay strong and someday all these tyrants will fall. I don't care if you use my name at all. Sincerely, Joshua Miller. Take care. Thanks, Joshua. I see the photos you got here, man, and I will share them with everyone. And they can take from them what they will or leave them, right? It's definitely something there, isn't it? And the experiences keep rolling in, one after the other. And you know, you guys, you know, as long as, like I always say, it doesn't matter what you're into or what you're after or what you want to pull off. The key to success in whatever it is you're pursuing, the key is to never, ever, ever quit. You can't quit, right? No matter how absurd it may seem at times, no matter how taxing, futile, you never quit, ever. And if you never quit, you succeed, right? what I'm doing here, I'm not going to quit here. And I know we've already proven the fact, as long as we keep going, as long as we keep maintaining and keep going, eventually the correct, the correct piece of knowledge is going to come our way. And recently, uh, recently I received an email from someone who, who claims to have been um, directly involved with some very, very interesting episodes that have happened with between people and these beings and we've been we've emailed a couple times now and uh, this just may possibly be one of the emails that we all are hoping to receive due to the fact that we're doing this we're not quitting and if this email is one of those it's going to be something else let me just say that all right and as soon as I can, as soon as we figure out how to, and if the information that is promised comes through, um, you can guarantee that I'm going to share it with all of you, without a doubt. But just so you know, I don't even know why I said that, I shared that, I just did. I always share everything with you guys, and that's as far as I'm going to take that little tidbit so far. But just so you know, that email and other ones, 
there's other there's a lot more going on behind the scenes that and then is delivered on the camera okay you guys there's a lot of work going on there's a lot of persistence going on there's a lot of back and forth going on there's a lot going on and and much is going to come from it i can promise you that all right it's got to stay the course don't give up and keep going never waver right now yeah, oops i gotta mark that as red I'll put those photographs in this email, obviously. Thanks for that share. Thanks for that share, Joshua. And keep us posted, man, on anything else you discover, any knowledge you come across that you think everybody can benefit from here. All right, man? All right, here's another one. Mark, this is red. The event that started it all in 1971 with photos. All right, man. Doug Messer from Flatwoods, Kentucky. Hey, Steve, thanks again, man, for your platform. I know that you won't want to keep, I know you want to keep this platform for Sabi or Sasquatch interaction, but what happened to my family in 71 will always be hard for others to grasp. I usually send you local Sabi stories around Flatwoods, Kentucky area that I have collected and gathered personally, but watching your videos for the last couple of days and listening to the reply, to the underwear on backwards story and the other story about all being connected, I have to share this one. All right, let it rip. I grew up on a hundred acre farm in Greenup County where my family grew what we needed to survive. Yes, we lived off the land. In summer 71, there was a very bad electrical storm knocking out the electricity for some time. I went to bed during the storm as a kid of five years old and remember waking up to a whirling, whistling, humming sound that drew me to the window. I remember it very well because at that age I was tall enough to look out the window and rest my chin on the window sill. It was raining outside and very dark, but would have large flash flashes of lightning that lit up the night for about three to five seconds at a time. During both the blackest of night and the daylight brightness of the lightning flashes, the object sitting 30 yards away from our house was very clear. When it was black outside, I could see a line of lights that flowed like a prism, changing from blue to green to red to yellow to different colors. Not like each light would turn on and then change to the light next to it, but more of a flow of energy that would best be described as almost like a liquid swirl of color, or like an oil lamp of different color fluids inside. I also noticed a dull light being lit from the inside of this thing that illuminated a dome bubble on top. This was what we could see when it was dark and no lightning flash. When the lightning would light up the sky, we could see a large silver colored disc that appeared to set on three landing gear. It was as a bug as our house and was the classic saucer shape with the dome on top. When the lightning would flash, you could not see the changing colored energy lights on the outside edge of the disc's largest circumference, the outer edge of the disc. Now, when I say we, I'm referring to my mother and father, who was also looking out the window at this thing. I can remember it clearly, as if I was still looking at it. But then I remembered nothing more that night. What I do remember is being visited on the farm by a black four-door car with black windows sometime after that. Not sure if it was the next day or a couple days after. Like I said, we lived on 100 acres, and our driveway was about a quarter mile long, gravel road off the blacktop, two lane in the country. I remember me and my parents and both grandparents being outside and saw this big black car turn off the blacktop and head toward the houses. I remember my dad turning to me and telling me, go to the barn and play and do not come back until we come get you. Now run. What did he know? Not sure. But being a country kid, I did what any other kid would do. I ran toward the barn. but stopped at the garage and hit so I could see what was going to happen. Yes, non-compliant with authority at that age also. I witnessed two very tall men in black suits with white shirts, black thin ties and sunglasses and black hats, fashionable at the time in the early 70s. They parked and got out, walked up to my family, never taking their glasses off or their hats. They spoke to my family for about 10 minutes or so and then walked back to the car. All this time, I was watching through a crack in the wood beside the slots of wood siding on the garage. A shed with a roof was, at, was the actual building. I noticed the passenger when he went back to the car stop and look around like he was looking for something else. I was sure 
he knew I was there watching. After they left and drove down the quarter mile gravel road to the blacktop, my family stood in the yard and watched them drive off. Once they reached the blacktop and drove away, only then did they turn to look for me. Of course, I was not that far away. My dad said that they were the FBI investigating cattle mutilations that were happening at this time to farms around us. They were a matter of fact about things and asked my grandfather about livestock on the farm. We had two cows, I can remember, die and found in the field by the pond. I remember them on the ground and pieces cut off and no eyes, but also remember my dad talking about not seeing any tracks or blood on the ground. Yes, the 70s were strange in many ways. When I was 30, I asked my parents about why we never discussed that night on the farm and what we witnessed. They both replied, I don't know why we never talked about it. I remember it, but not sure why we never talked about it. We ended up talking about what we remembered and we all had the same memory, but nothing after looking at it, but nothing after looking at it through the window. Steve, I'm attaching two pics. The first is the picture of me in front of our tiny little home on the farm. You can see the field beside the house where it landed. The second picture is a Google Earth pic of the property 50 years later. I drew where the house sat on the property in 71, and what you will see is a circle on the ground about 30 yards away from where the house, is, where the house used to be. You can see where the grass is different and a perfect circle is still noticeable after 50 years. I do remember at around 10 years old, while we went back and visited my grandparents on the farm, that there were family friends over and the adults were outside sitting on the porch that faced up the ridge. I remember them all running into the house and my dad and grandpa grabbing all the guns off the gun rack and handing them to the men that were there. I remember him saying that he counted about 30 of them walking out of the tree line down the hill toward the house. I can tell you that if there was 30 head of deer, 30 bears, or 30 turkey, with the firepower that went out the door that night, we would have plenty of food that night. But no shots were fired and they stayed there a while. I can only imagine what these things were that walked down the hill toward the house that evening around dusk. My dad or family never spoke about it. My dad refused to tell me what they were. I have a pretty good feeling now what they were. Sorry for the long story, but I agree with the people sharing stories about some kind of connection. I have no memory of being abducted or anything like that. I just find it strange. Sometimes the crazy, unthinkable things happen to me and my family. Feel free to share Doug Messer, Flatwoods, Kentucky. Doug shared. Got it, man. And, uh, that is some, um, it's got to, I got to save this into my phone so I can make sure I can grab these photos to share with everybody as requested. I can see the circle right here from here. And uh, I don't envy that experience at all. And I don't know what I would do personally if I had guys show up on my property, the typical classic the black cars, the tinted windows, and the sunglasses, etc., etc. I think from what I know right now, and what I've seen and heard from everybody, and if I lived rural like I do now, and I had something like that go down, I think I would probably make a couple phone calls to friends around the neighborhood, and we keep those guys here and question them, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I think I would keep them if I could. Keep them here at whatever, however that, whatever that took to keep them here, I think I'd possibly keep them here on the property and question the shit out of them and hopefully for All right, what else we got here? Title, The Forest Ranger's Son. Hey Steve, I've been listening to you for about two years now. Thanks for what you're doing. I hated to hear about your horse, but you gotta tell us a story about how he got his name. <laughs> uh, well, he's a, actually he's a red roan. This is coloring. And uh, he's an absolute clown the very first time I ever met him. And uh, how do we get him? Was, he was raised to be an outfitter horse up in northern BC from a, a place who raised numerous horses and crossed them with big draft horses and stuff. He was, a little for, he was a little on the smaller side for his size and his front feet kind of pigeon toed in a tiny bit. And, and uh, I, got a, I got a phone call from up north from my friends saying they're going to buy a truckload of horses. It's a good time to get in on a cheap horse. And I said, yeah, put me in for two. We got it for 700 bucks each. And that's how I bought him. And I named him Macaroni. So I don't know why we were just 
messing around. I knew it was a red roan. And I started calling him Roni. I murmured Roni. And then that turned into Macaroni. And I'm like, oh my god, that's his name. Macaroni. Macaroni. <laughs> and then he turned into the best horse that I've ever met and ever had in my entire life. Anyway, let's get on to this. I'll try to keep this as short as I can, brother. My name is Charlie. I'm sending this to maybe help to clarify some things. I live in Southeast Texas and grew up in Huntsville, Texas. My dad has a career, U.S. Forest Service, and he transferred here in 1970, where he was the assistant ranger slash topographer at the Raven District in Sam Houston National Forest until he retired in the late 80s. My oldest sister's husband was also Forest Service, who retired recently. Now, he was the ground crew leader for one of the firefighting helicopters and has fought fire in California, Oregon, Washington, and other places out west as well as Texas. My brother, who we lost recently, was also a forester, but he was with Louisiana Pacific until they closed the mill in the new Waverly, Texas. Then he went to work for a private timber management company. The reason I told you all this is because none of them have ever had an encounter or have had the powers at B warn them about Sasquatch. Now, I've spent a lot of time in this thicket as well hunting and fishing, etc. Not to mention, I've walked many a mile carrying a backfire torch working with the old man since the age of around eight during prescribed burns and forest fires. If my dad knew about the Sasquatch, he would have let my brother, brother-in-law, and myself know, especially if he thought we could be in any danger. However there, have been, however, there have been quite a few sightings in and around the Sam Houston National Forest. Now, I haven't had an encounter that I know of, but there was this one time. My senior year in high school, 1986, there was a big party out near the Walker Montgomery County line, and a buddy of mine and me drove down the road a ways to smoke a joint. We drove down the road a few miles and pulled onto a woods road a couple of hundred yards and turned around, turned the lights off, and proceeded to smoke that joint. It was an old 69 Firebird, so no AC, so the windows were down and the engine off. We kept hearing something out in the brush about 50 to 75 yards away, I'm guessing. But whatever it was sounded hella big and walking on two legs. It spooked us enough that I came back on the farm, onto the farm road sideways. My buddy that was with me lived only about four miles from there and he was like me, not afraid of shit out there, but it got our attention. My ex-wife's dad saw a Sasquatch in the Trinity River bottom up near the Highway 7 area a few years back while deer hunting. He watched it for 5 to 10 minutes and it moved on. And Steve, if the Trinity River has a version of Troy Landry from the show Swamp People, it's this guy. It didn't keep him out of the woods though. I asked him if he had thought about shooting it and he said it didn't really cross his mind and it looked way too human to consider. He didn't give me much details about what it looked like other than that. I heard another encounter out around the East Fork of the San Jacinto River, J-A-C-I-N-T-O, just recently where a woman was in her backyard with her weenie dog. The yard had an eight-foot privacy fence with nothing but national forest behind it and no neighbors for a couple of miles. Her husband was working out of town at the time. Well, she was in the backyard with the little dog and it Started, started raising hell at the fence, so she let it out, figuring it was after a swamp rabbit or something. A minute or so later, the little dog came flying over the fence, ripped in half. She got a, she got a constable out to look around, as well as a friend of mine who told me the story. He was walking the perimeter with the officer, and the cop said, Yeah, you have a problem, half under his breath. My friend asked me if he got many reports, and the constable told him that they had gotten around 10 just in the past couple of weeks prior to then. I haven't seen anything yet, but I know they are there. And like you, I would like to know why we're being misled. I'm sure it has something to do with their capabilities like telepathy, etc. If, here, if I hear of any new things happening, I'll let you know. I hope you can make heads or tails of this. My ADHD and my typing emails this long on a cell phone doesn't work very well. Keep up, keep up the good work, brother. There are a bunch of good old boys like me that have your back. I don't care if you use my name, fuck them and feed them fish heads. <laughs> right on, Charlie. Charlie Jackson. Thanks for that email and that share, man. Good enough. Just, you know, you know, when the first 
part of that email where you stated all the forestry workers and their histories and their careers and never seeing anything. Uh, that's more common than not, right? I mean, I have numerous friends of mine that I hold close and I respect, huge respect for them. And they're all very A-type, very capable, lifelong hunters, lifelong fallers, life lifelong loggers, lifelong West Coast Vancouver Island fishing guides. And they don't have any time for this topic because it's just like, whew, they don't give a shit. They never see anything, never heard anything. And uh, they got no interest. I don't even bring it up with them. But that's just an example for me and you, just like you just displayed. There is shit piles of people who spent their whole life out there where these things are. And they never saw one little iota of them, never heard them, that they know of, that they mention of. And uh, zero, nothing. Zero. Nada. Here's what it is. Maybe one day we'll figure out why that is. Maybe we won't. Probably we'll find out. It's just the way it is, right? Not everybody's going to be aware of this topic firsthand. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter if you lived right next to a cedar tree in the middle of everywhere for 10 years straight and didn't see shit or numerous cedar trees, whatever. I'm just babbling. But obviously, what you do for a living and how long you spend in the woods has nothing to do with whether or not you get to experience these things. There's something else going on. There's some other something that enables certain people to become the members of the club and no return, don't you think? That's what I think. I guess it would take some time, it would take too much time if you started interviewing every single person and uh, maybe got a feel for what they all have in common, maybe, I don't know. But it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's definitely no shortage of confusion going on, right? All right, what do we got? Mark is red. Exciting Sasquatch encounter must read. Steve, I had a two minute daytime encounter with a Sasquatch in Georgia between South Columbus, Georgia and Lebanon, Georgia, which is well past the military base. While I was driving southbound on a rural two lane road with one other driver in front of me and we were both in trucks and nobody else for at least 50 miles either direction on that stretch of road. And in Georgia, there's only a highway patrol every 50 to 60 miles from each other. Now, this big ass Sasquatch man was at least 9 to 10 feet tall with lightish, light brownish hair and ripped as hell with the biggest and widest shoulders and thighs I've ever seen on anything, bipedal and running full stride like 40 miles per hour plus, at least through the tall alfalfa grass, which would be up to my chest, and I'm six foot two. And the grass was at least three and a half feet tall and not ready to be cut and bailed yet, and it was up to the Sasquatch's hips. He was running with a purpose, like Jerry Rice going for a deep Hail Mary by Joe Montana. The Sasquatch man was running towards the road at an angle through the field, and on perfect angle to collide with me or the other driver. We were doing about 85 miles per hour, and we are about to hit him, or he was going to hit one of us within just a few seconds or so and we both slammed on our brakes and came to a complete stop as he kept coming until he reached those deep drainage ditches that, get, that go down about six feet and back up to the road that catch all the rainwater. He's gonna get hit by one of our trucks, for damn sure, and if he hit one of us, we would have been dead for sure. No airbags were gonna help that situation. And just as the Sasquatch man started to go down into that drainage ditch, myself and the other driver in front of me locked out, locked our brakes up to avoid an impact with that giant Sasquatch man. But in an instant, there was a flash and the Sasquatch man completely vanished into thin air right in front of me and the other gentleman's eyes. The other driver and I stood there alone in total amazement and in total shock looking at each other and looking back at the field and the drainage ditch trying to figure out what the hell just happened. They both went over inspected the trail that was cut through the grass and there was no hole. There was nothing. There's no reason for him to disappear except for going somewhere that we've never known or we could go before. We were deep in BFE in the middle of Georgia back in 05 when there was only just a rural, a rural country, rural country two lane road trying to figure out what the F just happened. And after about five minutes or so of inspecting the area, we were both quiet 
and shared no words because we were both in total mind F and in amazement. We both scratched our heads and got back into our vehicles and headed on south towards the Florida slash Georgia line. There was no other cars and no other witnesses and this is in the middle of rural Georgia in 05. I did return back to the corporate office and I bought, brought everybody in the conference room and I told everybody about the new business that we were starting and then I shared my encounter with everyone around that corporate table and I didn't care if they thought I was crazy but nobody said a word or discounted my encounter whatsoever. I have three other, three other encounters in Northern California which one of them is quite hilarious but none of them were this flat out in your face visually for that length of time and also seeing it disappear into some other dimension is a total mind-blowing event that your brain just can't wrap around. That's my story and it's the truth and I'll take it to my grave Steve. I'm sharing my encounter with all the people that know the truth and that they are here and share this planet with us and nobody needs to tell me or prove anything to me whatsoever. You may use my name. Thank you Steve for stepping up and putting us all this out there. Since then I've lived in Washington State, now not too far from you. You're definitely an awesome cool cat, Chad Boomer. Chad, and you're an awesome cool cat for being brave enough to share all that here publicly with all the people in your name, man. We're all the same, we're all equal, all right? We're all here. We all know what we're talking about and we all have had it up to the nuts with the bullshit. And uh, it's time to give people back their respect, their confidence, and reassure them they're not nuts and, uh, and figure out the answers for ourselves. No more demanding shit. There's nobody, there's nobody to demand anything from. We, f we figure it out for ourselves. We figure, out, figure it out for ourselves. We figure out the bullshit and then we eliminate the source who keeps creating the bullshit and inflicting it on all of us. We eliminate it, right? Anyway. So that's it for this morning so far. Got some stuff to do, got some fencing to do, got lots to do. The sun's coming out. It's blinding after not seeing it for freaking ever. Talk to you guys in a bit.